A lot of people ask me how to build wealth, if it's even possible to get rich anymore without having a huge salary or inheriting the money. The traditional advice recommends investing a small portion of your paycheck each year for 30, 40, maybe 50 years until, yeah, you're finally a millionaire, but you're also so old you can't enjoy it. I don't know about you, but I don't have anywhere near that much patience. If you're like me and want to build wealth a whole lot faster, then this is the video for you. And believe me, in many ways, faster is much easier. Have you ever run a short race, maybe a 100 yard dash? It's not too hard, right? Pretty much anyone can do that. How about a marathon though? Could you run a marathon? Some people can, but not most of us. What's the difference? How do you run a sprint as opposed to a marathon? For a sprint, you run hard and fast, but you're done pretty quickly and then you can relax. You won't even be that tired. For a marathon though, you run a lot slower, but you have to keep it up for a much, much longer amount of time and it's exhausting. Now think about getting rich. Most personal finance experts suggest that you can get rich by running a marathon. You invest a small amount for a long, long period of time, which sounds painfully slow and it can feel like you're never going to get there, which is demoralizing. I'd like to suggest that you can get rich a whole lot faster and easier by doing the sprint version of investing. And by getting across the finish line sooner, you'll enjoy the good life longer. To be clear, getting rich is not about buying expensive things. It's about improving your quality of life. Just so you know, I've personally used this method to build wealth quickly myself. I've spent my career as the chief financial officer of software companies and as an analyst on Wall Street. There is no more reliable way to build wealth than this. It's powerful and it will work no matter how old you are, although it definitely works better the younger you start. First, like it or not, you're going to have to earn money. Some people say to follow your passion, to get a job doing something you love. I say you're not working for the sheer joy of working, so pursue a career that will maximize your earnings while doing something that you can be good at. When I was in high school, I worked in a grocery store stocking shelves for $4 an hour. It wasn't a lot even then, but I enjoyed it. I liked my coworkers and I loved earning money. So I stayed and I worked as many hours as I could get. In a good week, I could earn almost $250. But at the same time that I was doing that, a friend was working as a waiter at a nice restaurant where he could earn well over $100 per night. On an hourly basis, that was four times as much as I was making. What was the difference between our two jobs? His job was more like a sales job where he got paid for results, whereas my job simply required me to do a task. Had I changed to that line of work, I could have earned much better pay too. That was an important lesson. Some jobs pay a lot more than other jobs for the same amount of work. For many people, the fastest way to improve their finances is to find a better job. Do research to find jobs that seem interesting and pay a whole lot more than what you're making and then figure out how to get yourself into one of those jobs. A great way to do this is talk to people who are doing the job they are interested in and ask them for advice on how to get there yourself. Then start taking the steps to make it happen. Often, better paying jobs need new skills or education. There's lots of ways to learn new things, including taking classes at college or community college and online sites like Skillshare, so take advantage of them. Alternatively, you could start a business. Starting a business has higher risks, it could fail, but it also has higher potential rewards. From one of my earlier videos, you might think I'm against side hustles, but I'm absolutely not. I'm only against side hustles that don't move you meaningfully forward in some way, whether financially or with skills and knowledge. If you have a job that leaves you with some spare time outside work, and some jobs don't, then starting a business on the side could be a great way to earn extra money and possibly become a business that could grow and replace your job. Another alternative is to buy an existing business, which could be less risky than starting a business from scratch, and it gets you up and running faster than starting one yourself. To maximize your career and your earnings, you may occasionally need to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Sometimes that might mean leaving a current employer for a new one, or changing into a new career, or buying or starting a business. Every time you do that, you will learn and grow, and hopefully you'll earn more as you do it. Once, after leaving my professional job working for a company, I started two small businesses. To do them, I had to learn a whole bunch of new skills. A year or so later, I got another professional job in part because of all the things that I'd learned and been doing with my small businesses. By going outside my comfort zone and learning new skills, I propelled myself forward. Whatever you do, choose to excel at it. This will take hard work, dedication, and reliability. 
in life. The people who do the best financially are the ones who are the best at what they do. The best people get the best opportunities and the biggest rewards. So strive to be the best. Next, take as much of your earnings as possible and invest it and start immediately. This is the most impactful part of this whole plan. Albert Einstein, the great physicist, referred to the compounding of interest as the eighth wonder of the world because it is so unexpectedly powerful. Because of compounding, a small amount of money can become a large amount of money if you just let the earnings grow long enough without withdrawing anything. For example, $1 invested today at an 8% annual return will be worth over $10 if you leave it invested for 30 years. Every $1,000 you save would grow to $10,000. That's huge. The beauty of investing early and just giving it time to grow is that you didn't have to go out and scrimp and save to grow up from 1,000 to 10,000. No, you only had to put in the first $1,000 and your investments did the rest. The investments added $9,000 to your savings. How's that for passive income? You didn't even have to lift a finger. This is the whole reason for cramming as much savings as possible into investments as soon as possible. You do the hard part for a relatively short amount of time, saving like crazy to invest the money, and then over time, your investments will do the rest of the work. Couldn't be easier. Speaking of easy, if you're enjoying this video, it could not be easier to hit that like button and subscribe too to join me exploring other topics in personal finance and entrepreneurship. By hitting those buttons, it lets YouTube know that I'm doing something right and helps share the video to others. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And while you're doing that, here's a short video of me making a world record motorcycle jump. Don't try that at home. Now back to the video. I don't recommend investments, but this is how I'd think about it for myself. I'd put as much money as possible into tax advantaged savings plans like my employer's 401k plan here in the US or into an IRA or a Roth IRA and then put the rest in a brokerage account. I'd keep my investments simple and just use index funds. Depending on age at the time, I'd consider a mix of about 70% equity index funds, 20% bond index funds, 4% gold, 4% REITs, and 2% in fine art. As I get older, I might shift some of the allocation from equity to bonds. And I'd split the equity and bond allocations to be about half domestic and half international. Last, and this is a recommendation, don't try to beat the market. You can't do it reliably, so don't waste time and energy trying. Just use index funds. One of the bedrocks to investing is to own a diversified portfolio, meaning assets with different investment characteristics that perform differently from each other as the economy and markets go through their up and down cycles. The goal of diversification is to reduce risk in your portfolio without meaningfully reducing the investment return. You might have noticed that I included an allocation to fine art in my sample portfolio. What's interesting is that fine art has historically shown a very low correlation to all the other major asset classes. At the same time, it has outperformed their returns. That makes it an excellent addition to a diversified portfolio. Fine art as an asset class has existed for centuries, but it was too expensive for anyone other than the wealthy. However, a company called Masterworks, who is sponsoring this video, has been working for years to make the art market accessible to ordinary investors, and it's a very interesting investment to include in a diversified portfolio. Masterworks lets you invest in fine art worth millions by artists like Picasso, Monet, and Banksy. So far, Masterworks has purchased over 200 pieces of art and sold 13, all at a gain. They do it by purchasing a painting and then splitting it into shares so you can invest as much or as little as you like. The process is simple. After you sign up, you review the art offerings on their website and invest in the ones that interest you or match your financial plan. And if Masterworks sells a piece you're invested in, you get a share of the proceeds. Recent net returns include 10%, 13%, and even 35% to give you a range. Of course, as with all investments, past performance doesn't guarantee future returns. Even if you ultimately don't decide to invest through Masterworks, I recommend you at least speak with them to learn more so you know about it for the future. Demand for Masterworks is very high and offerings have sold out in minutes. But if you contact Masterworks using the link in the description, you'll skip ahead of the wait list so you can invest right away. When you speak to a Masterworks advisor, they have a fiduciary responsibility to you. They're not salespeople and they don't get a commission for selling an investment. Their job is to help you figure out if art makes sense for your portfolio. If this sounds interesting, 
Contact them by using the link in the video description to learn more. Now that you're investing, the final step to building wealth is to ruthlessly cut expenses. It's often easier to increase your earnings a lot than it is to reduce your expenses a lot, which is why we started with a focus on earnings. But you need to cut expenses too. If this sounds unpleasant, just remember that you're in a sprint, not a marathon. In this sprint, you cut expenses to the bone, but you'll only have to do it for a relatively short while, and then you can ease up if you even want to. You may find you kind of like it. Your goal here is to live as far below your means as you reasonably can. Take pride in it because it will help set you free. Don't worry too much about cutting the small things that bring you joy because that won't save you much money anyway, but avoid the expensive things like a new car, a large apartment, and expensive clothes, things that will cost a lot but be worth zero to you in the future. Play a game with yourself. Ask, how can I reduce each expense as close as possible to zero? Take in a roommate if you rent an apartment or rent out a room if you own a house. If you're still paying for cable TV, Get rid of it. There are so many things you could cut out if you're motivated. When I finished college, I lived with two roommates in a small apartment for two years. I slept on the couch because my bedroom was actually the living room. Guess what though? It meant each of our shares of the rent was dirt cheap. Then when I got married, my wife and I lived in a tiny studio apartment for four years because it was so cheap. We saved a huge portion of our pay. Imagine how fast the money would pile up if you saved 50% or more of your pay every year. And last, a warning, because this could really throw off your plan. As time goes on and you earn more money, avoid lifestyle creep, which is when you spend more as you earn more. If you're not careful, you'll find that even though your pay is increased, you may be spending more too, and as a result, you're not saving anymore, even though you could and should. By following this plan, you'll be shocked at how fast you'll save a good amount of money. Then, after you've saved up a nice pile, you can ease up on the savings and just sit back and let time and compounding do the rest. Honestly, I think you'll be thrilled with the results. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.